Okay, I'm going to rip through this one fast. I'm going to talk about anything that's on the screen. So it's going to be various subjects, basically two subjects. One is, again, the Khazar people that we call Jewish nowadays. They are converts to Talmudic Judaism. Their conversion in 740 AD by their King Bulan was a political choice, not a religious choice. It was to get his Khazar people, his Turkish red-haired, black-haired, Turkish people called Khazars to ingratiate themselves into, to integrate themselves into the power structure of the known world at that time. It was good for him to join one of the three monotheistic religions. And, and it was a 33% chance. That could be the real meaning of the 33. He spanned that wheel in 740 AD and it landed on Talmudic Judaism by, almost by chance. They would have seen real Jewish people before that and thought, well, maybe that's the wise choice. Let's go that way. But they could have gone to Islam and they could have gone to Christianity. Literally, he had that choice. He had some, some uh, a Christian priest and, and uh, an Isla uh, Islamic imam come along and, you know, he, he decided. He, he, he decided and it was just a quirk of fate. So anyway... The Khazar people that we see on our television screens nowadays, right, and on, on the movie screens, all 90, more than 99% of the people we see on the movie screens are all what we call Jewish. They are Khazars, they are Turkish, they are not Israeli, okay? They are sitting on Palestine, and that whole area is not theirs anyway. If they want to return to their roots, they have to return to Turkey, and they have to return to the religion Tengri, which is their religion before 740 AD, their religion is, was, Tengri, the worship of animals, sacrifice of animals, sacrifice of horses, they shoot horses, don't they? Okay, uh, D. Zerda gave me this link uh, about the Khazars and their leaders, their military leader, the Bek, military ruler, the other, typically female, called the Kagan, moral or spiritual ruler, the Beckham and the Keegan. Uh huh. Beck and K and Kagan. Now, I then got a heads up from uh, Fixcon. Very good uh, link to one of George Lee's videos. Now, George Lee's might be legit. I don't know. Uh, I've come across him before. Um, this information on this one, uh, I'm going to go through some of it. It's an hour and twenty long. It's too long. But um, Anton Deck, uh, VZ. That, that rings a bell. Is oh, that League of Ex Extraordinary Gentlemen or something? Vasey Vesti De Beers. Eustace Roth, Rothschild. Right? Etc. He mentions Piers Morgan being in the bloodline, of course. He, he mentions Anton Deck, something to do with the bloodline as well. Uh, and them being in, in rehab at the moment because they've done something wrong. Well, that'll be interesting to find out. Um... And he mentions Ross. Well, that would be Jonathan Ross again. He, he wouldn't, wouldn't be coming from nowhere. Um, yeah. And then he mentions, very interestingly, he mentions uh, in 1309, the Bishop of Durham uh, had some dealings with, with these people of, you know, of bloodline. And his name was Anthony Beck. And even spelt the right way. Beck, military leader, Khazar, Jewish. What we call Jewish now. Huh? Just a Turk, really. Tingri Turk. Um, the, which also leads me on to Thomas a. Beckett. Right? Dodgy hand sign he's giving there as well, eh? Thomas Beckett. Beck. Very interesting. So that's in back in about 11... 11 18 to 1170, right? Even earlier. And, of course, Khazar could easily be Jewish. Why not? Beckett. But any, any Beck will, will, will almost always be uh, a Jewish person. And throwing up the old Baphomet 666 there. What's going on, eh? Now, there's something else I've found as well. I'll get to that. This guy, Kenanisa Bekele, Bekele. Now, 
What's that got to do with the price of cheese? A lot, a lot. Let me explain. In that other article about the Khazars, it says that the only people nowadays and in the past who ever really practiced real Judaism, who would be the original Jews, are the Ethiopians. Hello. Yeah, it mentioned the Ethiopians. And they practice the Judaic faith quietly. Yeah, not politically. But look at how, how this Bekele, Bek, is throwing up a certain little hand sign. And wait a minute, hold on. And again, that's the Baphomet. You've got to wonder what the, uh, what the Jewish religion is, even, even in Ethiopia, huh? Is it occultic there as well? Is it the Hebrew Kabbalah there as well? This guy certainly seems to be uh, firing it. The old Baphomet hand sign again and again. What's going on there, eh? So anyway, um, let's carry on with... Because uh, I find that very interesting. Very interesting how, how these Becks and Beckets go back. Now, let's go also go back to um, the Duke of Wellington. I, I visited his, his fortress uh, in Deal on the south coast, um, I don't know, a year or two ago. And I was looking at the portraits, and he's got a huge Jewish schnoz, really big hooked Nose, massive, almost as big as, no, as big as Adrian Brody's. Nose at a half, right? And I also noticed, and I was looking at the pit, at the portraits of him, and, and of course there's by Goya, but Goy, yeah, but there was a, a portrait also of him by a, a, a Jewish um, artist. There's a Jewish link. How far does this Jewish link go back? I mean... The height of the Khazar Empire was 850 AD. So it goes way back. Hidden history, eh? This bloodline. This hidden hand, hidden Masonic hand. The first Duke of Wellington. What years was he? If that is a Masonic hidden hand, let's see. Duke of Wellington, first... See. Oh, that's okay then. That fits. 1769 to 1852. I mean, Jewish Zionist Freemasonry was was up and running easily in the late uh, 1600s. So yeah, that was a Masonic um, hidden hand, and he will he he will have been Jewish. This Duke of Wellington, with his massive nose. Right. Let's see. Extra pictures. Yeah, Meryl Streep. She was wearing that Time's Up jumper recently. The Golden Globes. The Golden Balls. I like a bit of Golden Balls down the lodge. Oh, yeah. Bit of checkerboard. Time's Up. Is it Time's Up for March 22 this year? We shall find out. Queen Witch. Kabbalah Witch. She threw up the devil horns as well at the, the awards shows. Oh, yeah. Thomas Beckett, Anthony Beck. Now, yeah, I may as well throw, throw a few more in. Back to Seattle false flag with uh, Matthew Broderick, his whole career being the Torch Song trilogy. And look how it's in emerald green. Yeah, 9 11, 6 12 16, and then what? March 22nd, some, some year, maybe to this year, maybe next year, who knows. Seattle. Tower Heist, the second most coded movie of all time after, well, the big one, Ferris. And it's all coding the Seattle false flag. I need to watch it yet again to try and get some of the, the 22 hints from it. <coughs> War Games 1983, two, two targets, Las Vegas, Seattle. Las Vegas first, then it was on 7-11 um, <coughs> last year. Mandalay Bay, and then Seattle, missiles, boom. 
<coughs> oh, a hoax, a new coax. The whole movie's a new coax. There you go. And it's based in Seattle. He, he lives in Seattle. You even see the Space Needle and the Puget Sound. Blackout on the back of it, of course. Blackout, cable guy. Look at the green, the emerald green cap. Medieval times on their hats. Cable guy pulling the cable. Blackout. Very evil person, this person. And like I said before, he was, you'd think he was miscast in this movie. He's not miscast, he, he's the key person in this movie because it's the American Civil War. And the second American Civil War is coming. Right? On the back of the Seattle false flag. They're going to bring it. So they had to have him in this Civil War movie. And they've got this new one called Hostiles now, huh? With the American flag. All right, let's see. I haven't got much time now. Um, I mean, don't forget that, eh? Never forget the towers, the explosions, 9, 11, the Ferris wheel, sun disk of Ra, and of course, 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2. Two, two, three, two, two. And on his cap, the 32nd Regiment. Put on the shades for the nuke blast hoax. The last shot. Shot Castle Bravo. Castle Bravo shot. They were all na named shots. Shot. Shot. Freemasonry. Shot. Dirty weekend. Tsunami reference, yeah. Immersion in water, yeah. Hold on, where is that? I want to find that. The Dolce Vita. Now, the reason why I put the Dolce Vita is because in the 4400, this person comes along and she's got a Dolce Vita poster in there. And as far as I know, the, the reference is this. It's immersion in water. It's a famous scene in the in the Fellini's Dolce Vita, isn't it? Immersion in the in the fountain in Rome, in water. That's what that reference is in the forty four hundred. Here's Wellington's fortress. There's your pulse. The Wonder Fuca plate. Right there. Magma filled plate right there. It's in the Lego Batman movie. Seattle, right there. Do you get it? This is flashed up for one second in the movie. One second. Okay.